it's inter it's interesting to me that there's so many cameras in all that line of vision. And I think that's what's going to end up convicting whoever did this. If it was Mr. Koberger, I think it's going to end up convicting him. I don't think the DNA is going to be used. I think they're going to eventually throw that out and not use it. I think they're going to go through a lot of motions and a lot of, you know, we got to, they're going to try to suppress as much evidence as they possibly can. If the defense is working right for her client, then she's going to try to suppress a lot of evidence, get a lot of things thrown out, um, procedural misconduct, things of that nature, you know, because she's trying to get Brian off. But if the prosecution has their, their case in order, and they really do have these camera images and things of that nature, the Linda... The Linda Lane, I believe that if they they use any of that, it's going to be the 405 to prove, you know, he did the first, first, second, third, fourth sweep. I was looking around those apartments and I was thinking, why did he take the long way around? You know, I was looking at... Um, Mr. Hughes, I think his name's Gray Hughes or something like that. And he was showing a, a video of a little white car going around and, you know, timing it to the camera times and this and that and the other. And I was thinking to myself, why would that vehicle have been going a long way down Wallenta, Indian Hills Road, all that long way back around to Taylor? back around the King Road, around the Queen Road Apartments, and then back again four times. It's almost like it took maybe five to seven minutes to drive that that route. And then the minutes that it stayed just waiting in between before it took off again. If this individual didn't do it, then he was the driver. Not the driver of the DoorDash, the driver. Like, he was waiting for the event to happen, and whoever did it, they came out, and he gave him a ride wherever he took them. But that's not a, I mean, that's something that doesn't have teeth in it either. And I just speculated, you know, it, um, it sounds good. It sounds good for movies. It sounds good for TV. But I think in reality, Mr. Koberger is, is the assailant. He is the, the one that unalived and killed these girls for whatever reason will Hopefully the alibi comes out. We'll know exactly where he was, what he was doing. And who knows, he might be innocent of the whole thing. Maybe his alibi will eventually exonerate him. Because he looked kind of smug in the court cases. He really does. He looks like, I know something you don't know, and you're going to end up looking stupid once we put all this in front of you. You know, I just hope they get the real person, you know, whoever did this, whether it's Coburg or whether it's four other people, you know, whoever, I hope they get the right people because it'll be terrible if they don't. I just feel they're dragging this out and dragging this out and dragging this out. So whoever the jurors are, they're not going to be as emotionally charged because the case is going to be so removed from their minds, they may have heard about it, but their emotions aren't going to be put into it. So it's going to be an unbiased jury. I hope you liked um, my video. I hope that you were able to follow along, that I wasn't going too fast. 
Um, I know I've had some new subscribers. I've had some good comments. Keep them coming. I'm not one of those creators that if you disagree with me, I'm going to go off on you or disagree with you and call you names and all this other stuff. I'm not one of those people. I actually enjoy reading your your thought process, you know, I enjoy it. Um, you know, it, it's, it's good to, it's good to have healthy dialogue. It's good to be able to get with people and, and to talk civilly without calling names and trying to show that you're smarter than everybody else and this and that and the other, because you know what, in reality, if we were experts on this topic, which I'm sure there are a lot of people that have a lot of knowledge, they wouldn't be on YouTube showing off their skills. They'd be helping law enforcement or whoever to capture these individuals that have committed these crimes. I want to want to send a shout out to people because I noticed that there's a lot of people that are struggling with their health. You see them on their videos and they're, they look like they haven't slept in a week. They're tired looking. They sound exhausted. They sound like they gotta they gotta finish this race that they started. You know, my opinion doesn't matter. My suggestions don't matter, I'm sure, but I hope they do. I hope that you listen. You gotta do some self-care. Because if you don't take care of yourself and you get sick and you something happened to you, you end up in the hospital from exhaustion. You're not doing yourself a bit of good. You're not doing your family a bit of good. You're not doing anybody a bit of good. There's my biggest fan right there. Um, so do know that if you need to take some time off, you're doing good. Get you some rest. Obviously, your subs will still be there when you come back. Because if something happened to you because you're overworked or under your self-care is not there, then what have you done it for? Do no harm. That is, that is my counselor mantra. Do no harm. That means to self, to others, all the way around. And, you know, these kids were in the prom of their lives. You know, they were they were getting ready to do great things, as we know. But unless you went to school with them or you were around their age, even if you knew Brian back in the day or whatever, you unless you hung out with him, while he was at WSU, you were in his class or anything like that. We really don't know these individuals' thoughts, beliefs, personalities. Sure, we saw a lot of smiles on social media. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to look happy. You're supposed to be in living your best life. But what if away from the camera, people aren't very nice? Because everybody has a, a, a side to them that isn't very nice. They talk about people. They make fun of people. They, they're not very accepting of all people. They, they just aren't very friendly sometimes. And we all have that. So you can't say, well, 
you're victim bashing or you're doing this or you're talking bad about the dead and this and that and the other will challenge me. When was the last time that you talked bad about somebody, you made fun of somebody that that really wasn't like you? We can we can have the best of thoughts for people once they're no longer here. I get it. Why are you gonna talk bad about somebody and be like, oh, they were the worst person on the planet? They deserved what they got. No, you're not going to do that. You know, people can watch this and they can dissect everything about me, where what my background looks like, you know, the fan were, and this and that and the other. And they can make fun of it. And they can say anything they want to say. But in the end, they don't know who I am off this camera. We all envelop a personality behind the behind the lens so if you can be anything in this world today how about you be kind how about whenever people do have to say their final eulogy of you they don't have to create word to describe someone that they know was not that type of person nobody deserved to lose their lives no matter what type of person they were, no matter what they did to people. So this that happened, you think about it. They're trying to tell you it was a crime of passion. They're trying to tell you it was a shakedown that went bad. What do you believe? What really went on? I believe that one person went into that house, took the opportunity that they wanted, and saw what it'd be like to murder four people. Whatever sick fantasy, whatever sick obsession that they had, they took that opportunity and they ran with it. Here's an example for you. You know how in our rational uh, rational brain, we tell ourselves, you know what? We know the difference between right and wrong. What makes us different from a criminal-minded person? I'm about to tell you. You know, I have a juvenile that committed a crime. He got caught for it recently, but he had committed another crime before that. And in his mind, he thinks he did nothing wrong because these crimes didn't hurt anybody. And that right there is the rationale that keeps people breaking the law because they believe in their mind that either the person deserved it or they were just having fun. Or they finally acted on a fantasy that they couldn't hold back on anymore. Their fantasy had to be reality. Being in their head, thinking about these situations were just not enough anymore. Stalking. Voyeurism infatuation all this wasn't enough and to be 28 when you have 21 year old knowing that you have a seven year age gap between you and possibly not feeling very comfortable with yourself and knowing that you're smart and you have a lot of intellect but very little social grace You'd feel awkward trying to get a date with one of these women. So therefore, you'd have to change your persona around them. So maybe your drug habit kicked back in because that changed the way you felt. Maybe your new addiction became 
chasing that excitement of the unknown. I'm chasing the excitement of what it feels like to kill. What it feels like to be in control of the situation where nobody is going to tell me no ever again. I'm in control where you can't reject me ever again. Where I'm telling you what to do. I'm showing you how I'm going to be in control. When you go into this mindset, I'm sure it's a scary place for that person, but yeah, he's been there many a time just in his fantasies. So therefore, to act it out is him just reacting on muscle memory. They say, why did he leave two people alive downstairs when he could have killed them all? Well, I believe but by that point, his body had emotionally dumped all the adrenaline all the cortisol, everything. It had a dump. And he was crashing. So he needed to get out of there because he could not sustain that energy high that he had while he was killing. So... So he left in a hurry, sped off, and thought, I did it. Now I know what it feels like to be a killer. It felt just like what I always thought it would feel like. It wasn't as hard as people make it sound. Because, you know, somewhere in his mind, he's a narcissist. He's a control freak. So he has to make it about him. Do you really believe he thought the whole time that he left about who he killed? What he created or what he they were leaving behind? No. I'm sure he thought about him and himself only because that's what a, that's what a killer does. They're fixated on the level of dopamine release that is created when the stimuli meets its heightened state. So how does he get that fix now that he's in jail? Have you ever thought of that? Every time you see him in court, he seems to be have a jovial looking face on him or he's he seemed very calm he doesn't have that look of panic or despair or confusion or bewilderment that he's had in all the pictures that we use when it comes to him on these thumbnails most of the pictures you see of him in court, he's calm. He's collected. Obviously, you want that to be the image that you present to the world, but what's he doing in a cell? Is he writing? Is he dissecting his defense? Is he trying to be smarter than... The other people in the room still? Or has he finally let go? And finally come into fruition of who he really is. The birth of a killer. If he did it. It's interest it's interesting to think about. See, when I graduated high school, I wanted to I wanted to chase serial killers. I wanted to get into the mindset. Now I'm wondering why. 
But the more I study crime, the more it makes sense. Because it's like a puzzle without all the pieces. And you're free to go after any avenue that you want. And that's basically the police have to become the killer to catch a killer. I'm sure that there's a serial killer that's already solved this case in their mind. Hell, there might be 10 of them, 20 of them. They might even be working with the FBI, you know? What better to catch one than to interview one? What would you have done here? Do you think it was really him? Do you think it was really him that did this? Do you think it was really him that did that? I did read today about the naked man that Brit, um, God, I always want to call her Brittany, Bethany, supposedly saw running out the back slider. It wasn't an article that was talking about the affidavit that she gave. And maybe the exculpatory evidence is that that man that she saw running out the back naked wasn't white. Whatever happened in that house that night, it could happen in anybody's house at any time. Do you ever wake up at 2 30, 3 in the morning out of nowhere and wonder why you're wide awake and what what's really going on? You could be in a sound sleep and then you just wake up and you're like, what the f and you look around. That's called the witching hour. But I'm getting kind of long-winded here, and I'm kind of going all over the place. I will bring it back, and I hope that you really enjoyed my presentation. Keep coming with the comment and tell your friends. Come take a look. Maybe they might like something that I present. Maybe they like how I, I present it. Or maybe they might like just a new approach. I'm no better than anybody, and I'm not worse than anybody. Just my own person. Y'all have a wonderful night.